Now I'm going to go to Mung. Hi, my name is Kujan Lor. I am Mung and curator of collections at the East Hampton Historical Society on Long Island. My colleague Marianne Howard has talked to you about creating an exhibit from objects in your house. I would like to share an example of an object from my own personal collection. The Badao, you see, was made by my aunt, Nao Vang, and it depicts a visual imagery of the history of the Hmong people up until their immigration to the United States. The entire story was hand embroidered on a single panel of cloth. The border around the central panel is common among Padao. Historically speaking, Padao are relatively new creations in Hmong culture. They only developed in refugee camps in Thailand after the Vietnam War. To fully understand the story cloth, we are going to use the approach outlined by Marianne, that is asking the who, what, when, where, and why. As I illustrated on this label, the Hmong are an ethnic minority who reside in southern China and Southeast Asia, Laos, Vietnam, and Thailand. They are an agrarian society who lived separate from other ethnic groups and developed an elaborate embroidery tradition. The embroidery was used to decorate clothes. Clothing for special occasions, such as the New Year's celebration or a wedding, could be elaborately embroidered. As the Chinese conquered more land, they eventually defeated the Hmong and we became their subjects. After many years under Chinese rule, some Hmong fled China into Laos and Vietnam. My great-great-great-grandfather made this journey into Laos. Living in Laos, the Hmong settled on the mountaintops and practiced slash-and-burn agriculture. Throughout the 1960s and 70s, communist Laotians in North Vietnamese fought against the royal Laotian government. It was during this time the Central Intelligence Agency began recruiting and training Hmong to combat communist incursion in northern Laos. They created the military base in Longchen, where many Hmong families relocated there during the war. As communist forces moved further into Laos, Longchen came under attack. The military base was evacuated in early 1975, and about 2,000 to 3,000 Hmong were taken with them, leaving behind tens of thousands more. Realizing that they were not going to be evacuated by aircraft, they fled as communist forces were bombing and shooting at them. Leaving their homes behind, many Hmong fled over the next few years and made their way across the heavily patrolled Mekong River into Thailand. The Mekong River is the 12th longest river in the world, with an average width of around one mile. For families, especially those with children, this is not a simple task to undertake. Some created flotation devices from bamboo. When the Hmong arrived in Thailand, they were put into refugee camps such as Ban Vien Nai or Nong Kai. While in these refugee camps, the Hmong found their entire lives disrupted and left with nothing to do. Aid workers admired the embroidery and the Hmong saw a new enterprise in making embroidered textiles to sell. They took their traditional motifs and created a new art form. These padao vary from being applique and reverse applique cloths to embroidered cloths that retell a story. With the passage of the U.S. Refugee Act of 1980, many more Hmong were able to enter the United States. While living and creating new lives in the United States, the Hmong continued to grow and expand upon this new art form developed in refugee camps. How does padao and the other padao that you see throughout the video come into my hands? A few years ago, some colleagues of mine wanted to purchase some padao, so I reached out to my family and my aunt sent over some of her padao that she was selling. I immediately saw the priceless value of these items and purchased them from her to form my own personal collection. As a museum professional in the curatorial field, my first and foremost job is to safeguard objects in perpetuity for present and future generations. The collection I have is not for me, it is for others to one day see and learn from. Right now, they are not museum objects, but one day they might be.